Hi, I'm Frank Rindrod with Earthwork Programs. Really excited to be here today because we love the wilderness. And out here in the wilderness, you just have such a great time connecting with nature and learning about animals, learning about your forest, and really connecting deeply with place. But there are times when our hikers, our backpackers, campers, they get disoriented and they get lost or they're in a survival situation. We're here to share with you some of the top things that you can have with you in a survival situation and what you'll find out that it's really not about equipment. It's not about gear. It's not about having like a huge backpack full of stuff. It's about having a small backpack and maybe 10 items. So that's what we're going to do and we're really excited about this course coming up. Enjoy this journey where you start to really learn some really important survival skills as well as understanding the need for practicing and training with the equipment that you have. And it's really not about having the best equipment, it's really about having a few key things that will make all the difference. So I know I'm lost. I know I'm going to spend the night here. Um, maybe someone might hear me if I make some noise, but I have to. I have to do what's first, which is calm down, center myself, and get myself a fire. If I have a fire, I'll be able to warm myself up. I will have a psychological change that'll allow me to feel more at home, and I'll know that even if I don't have a shelter, I can build a big fire and I'll be able to survive the night. Okay, so I've gathered a few things really quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right here in between my legs. And I'm going to take this like this. And this is all dry, by the way, and I'll give you a close-up of that a little bit later. But right now what I'm showing you is this is where your thinnest, finest material is. And this is what's going to be most dry and easy to dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off and actually put it in the middle of my setup here. Just like that. So when I'm lighting, I'm actually lighting the lightest, finest things. And I have this bundle set up in a way where when I look through it, I can see the light. If it's too dense, if it's too dense, it's not going to be able to have the flame be able to go through and heat up and, and burst into flame. It's not going to have the oxygen. So I need to make sure that this is wide enough so that it can actually have oxygen. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating parallel fractures within the branch. And it's winter time, so it's really hard to find anything that can really make good cordage. So what I'm doing is I'm creating cordage to be able to hold my, my tinder bundle together so I can light it. So I'm really thankful for this small branch. So now I've got my cordage. I've got something that I can wrap around it and maybe even tie a knot. To really hold it together but I really don't need something really strong because I'm just using it to be able to 
keeps this from spreading out. A lot of times when people are making a fire, their, their tinder spreads out or their kindling spreads out. And when that happens, it doesn't have the fuel that it needs to keep going. It's one of the most common mistakes. So what we're doing here is we're creating a way of being able to wrap this. And we're wrapping our really fine material inside the bottom. And this seems like a lot of extra work, but when you actually see how it helps you, you'll recognize that it's really not. Okay, so now we take our, our fine material here, and that's what we light first. So this is not an emergency bundle. This is just a bundle that I want to get a quick fire going. Notice that I'm not putting this on the ground. If I light a match like this and I put pressure sideways on the wood, especially if I'm in an adrenalated state, it's likely that match is going to break. So what I do is I actually put my finger in line with the wood and the strongest part of the wood. So I'm in alignment with the fibers and then what I'll do is I'll push and light. I also have a, a, a way to be able to cup it. So I can cup it and I can use the wood from the match to be able to light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this here. This is going to start burning. I'm going to put my matches away. And I'm turning it so that it's burning the kindling. So once I get this established, see all that smoke that's billowing out? That's because this is completely covered in ice. So I'm holding this like this. I've got my green cordage in there so it's not going to burn through. I can also be resourceful while I'm right here and I can grab a little bit of extra and put it right on there. So now this is starting to establish. So now even if the wind comes up, right? Even if the wind comes up, I'm still I still have my fire. This is also still throwing off heat. And my hand is far enough away where I can actually control it. Now I'm going to put my fire where I need it to go so it's safe when I'm in a forest like this. But this is just some of the techniques that we're going to share with you. And it's really important to have your fire skills down. So this is what you do in the wintertime for an emergency situation. Thanks a lot. Take care.